Once we enter the fall, the most likely scenario when it comes to the Enzo outlook is that we will be in for an El Nino pattern. And that's going to play a big role in terms of what type of conditions we're going to experience this fall. And in terms of what um, um, how strong the El Nino will be, most likely we'll have an El Nino that's anywhere between weak to moderate, which again, will play a big role in terms of the conditions we will expect because there is definitely differences um, when it comes to the average chapters you experience during a stronger El Nino in comparison to a weaker El Nino. So the fact that we're gonna experience most likely a weak to moderate El Nino is something we're gonna need to take a look at to really forecast what type of conditions we're going to experience this fall. So here's a map of what typically happens during an El Nino. So we typically see colder than average conditions for much of the southeast and this is primarily due to the fact that a subtropical jet moves through bringing a lot of troughs in the area and of course with all those clouds in the sky from the troughs moving through that definitely limits the amount of shortwave radiation that the, that the surface around the southeast absorbs. So it's simply a lot cooler than average during an El Nino right around the, the Gulf Coast states and we even see more moist than average conditions for much of the southwest again due to the same reason we have a subtropical jet during an El Nino that typically moves a little bit further northward. So that brings a lot more moisture to the Southwest. And take a look further northward, we see that typically during an El Nino, the jet stream is a lot, is relegated a lot further northward, which allows stronger Southwesterly flow to bring the warmer air um, further northward. And as a result, we see warmer than average conditions as well as drier than average conditions because we don't necessarily see the jet stream move far south enough at least a polar jet stream to bring a lot of those chops so if you're definitely so if you want drier than average conditions as well as warmer than average conditions and the northern united states looks like it's going to be the best for you at least when it comes to the um how warm it is it will be compared to average in those areas so definitely something to look forward to if you're into the warmer and drier conditions as we approach the fall so typically during a week or a neutral El Nino, these are the temperature anomalies, at least compared to long-term average between 1991 and 2020. And we clearly see a pretty big indication that much of the Southern United States will experience cooler than average conditions. And we do also see cooler than average conditions on average during a week to moderate El Nino right around the Northeast as well as the Ohio River Valley. And we see mainly average conditions for um, right around the Pacific Northwest. Um, but since it's higher than average, I'll lean towards the Pacific Northwest as well as um, portions of the Northern Midwest to experience warmer than average conditions. While most of the United States, typically during the fall months uh, um, of a week or moderate El Nino, we see cooler than average conditions. So definitely something to keep in mind. Again, um, the this isn't always the best indication to go by. We need to take a look at several different factors because of course what happened during those weak and um and um, moderate el nino years might not necessarily apply to today because of course there's other factors we need need to take a look at such as the sea surf temperature anomalies and weather just changes very quickly we can't just take a look at historical data and just call it a day because weather of course between year after year changes quite a bit it's very difficult to forecast especially um with um, for a forecast five days out, imagine something more long term than that. So, of course, don't take it with a grain of salt, but typically, on average, we see that um, temperatures are cooler than average during a weaker or moderate El Nino. And here are the precipitation anomalies compared to long term average. And we see that clearly in the northern Midwest, it's a lot drier than average, usually during a week to moderate El Nino during the fall months. And then we see that for the southeast, it's more moist than average. And like I said, this is because a subtropical jet brings plenty of low pressure systems right up along the Gulf Coast state. So that, of course, um, makes it more likely that the precipitation will be 
much higher than average and for the northern um, United States a polar jet stream is relegated well further northward of the United States so a lot of the troughs and the moisture um, misses out on much of the northern United States especially right around the Great Lakes so if you're hoping for a drier than average winds I mean fall um, for much of the northern Midwest um, definitely this is definitely the year that's gonna be we're more likely to experience drier than average conditions especially in the drought stricken regions of um, which is currently occurring in portions of the Midwest I know the plant the 31 atmospheric rivers uh, brought a lot of the west coast out of the job but there's still areas in the midwest still dealing with the drought so in those areas it is a little bit more likely that um the temperature that the precipitation will be below average but again take it with a grain of salt but this is um this is probably the best indication of what you should expect on average for this fall for much of the united states now let's take a look at the drought monitor another big factor we're going to need to take a look at when determining what type of conditions we're bound to experience um, for this fall because it's very difficult for a drought to go away because it's there's pretty much just uh, typically during a drought there's just a big ridge that's just parked over and any trough that tries to push it away just it just won't budge a bridge is just too big typically during a drought scenario and it it and it's like I said very difficult for um to get rid of overnight as droughts last for a prolonged period that's why they're called droughts because we have a prolonged period of months on end of drier than average conditions so we easily could see this drought extend into the fall months especially if where um the midwest continues to see an El Nino, which does bring some drier than average conditions for much of the northern Midwest. We're gonna need to wait and see if this keeps up, but it makes me suspect that since it's drier than average for much of the west coast at least the northwestern portion of the united states um and due to the fact that it's likely going to be exacerbated by the an el nino building we're more likely than not going to see drier than average conditions for much of the, the, the northwestern portions of the united states and taking a look at the eastern half it's a completely different story we see that the only a couple areas are experiencing slightly drier than average conditions such as new jersey um, um areas surrounding new jersey such as the mid-atlantic as well as florida we do see that the conditions are drier than average but it's definitely a lot um the back to is definitely far less than what we're seeing in the central midwest so these could easily go away especially since the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average right around florida so of course so that um the, th the summer thunderstorm activity where it rains for five minutes and goes away will be more act um will likely be more active are right around the florida area so it certainly will help for the slight drought you're experiencing right now um for the most part which may be a bummer for some of you i know you guys don't want to see thunderstorms in florida but then again it does get very hot there so um it's a win-win situation i um if you because it makes it um it makes the temperatures cooler in florida but at the same time you might not want the rain but um, it's definitely needed right now because there is a slight drought going on. So um, the most likely scenario is that the drier than average conditions will be relegated more towards the northwestern portion of the United States. So here's the sea surf temperature anomalies as of right now. And we see, of course, due to the plenty of atmospheric rivers that move through the west coast um, this past winter, the sea surf temperatures are much cooler than average. And that could play a big role in terms of the type of temperatures you should experience right up along the west coast for this fall. Because when the sea surf temperatures are cooler than average, that plays a big role in terms of the surrounding uh, in terms of affecting the surrounding air temperature so since there isn't a lot of energy right over the right over the sea surf temperatures um pretty much long story short is that there won't be enough energy to raise up those temperatures with the lack of energy that's found with these cooler and average sea surf temperatures so most likely that so it's more likely that the western at least the west coast of the united states will experience cooler than average conditions but taking a look at the east coast completely different story sea surf temperatures are warmer than average and this makes sense because we're in a positive atlantic multi decadal oscillation which typically does bring warmer than average sea surf temperatures over a prolonged period 
period. So that should certainly raise up temperatures along the coast. And not only that, that could enhance the possibility of tropical cyclones making landfall along the coast during the fall. Because, of course, fall is one of the more active um, seasons when it comes to the hurricane season. More simply, September and even October, you could get some pretty big storms as well. It's not until November it weakens. But during those two months and with sea surface temperatures this warm, that there's definitely that higher risk of a tropical cyclone potentially coming close to this the united states especially the southeast so that could contribute to the precipitation anomalies potentially being higher than average this fall if we were to see a tropical cyclone impact the southeast which i certainly hope won't happen but with the hurricane season you never know even if it's an el nino it all it takes is just one tropical cyclone so keep that in mind in the southeast that there could be that possibility of that as well Here's a look at what the CFS model is forecasting when it comes to its average temperature anomaly over the three fall months, September, October, and November. And surprise, surprise, the CFS model is forecasting warmer than average temperatures um, uh, again for the over a three month period. But like I've been saying in a lot of my previous forecasts, long term forecast videos is that take the CFS model with a major grain assault because the CFS model has always been very lenient on um, bringing much warmer than average conditions and a lot of the cases it's certainly not the case as the CFS model seems to have a very strong bias towards it being warmer than average so definitely take it with a grain of salt um, because the CFS model does have this big bias but again it's at least something to take a look at since it's still a computer model still um, takes in historical data um, but we do see that the CFS model expects warmer than average conditions for much of the western half of the United States. Now let's take a look at the precipitation anomaly over the same three month period and we do see that um, there isn't really any area that's receiving much more rainfall or much less rainfall than usual. We do see less rainfall along the coast, which is definitely contradicting what you typically see during an El Nino in some cases along the west coast. So I'll take it with a grain of salt, but it's at least something to maybe take um, a look at if you're interested. So I want to hark back on my previous hurricane season video I made, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And the reason why is because there is that threat of tropical cyclones making landfall somewhere along the southeast um, for this um, for the fall. So definitely keep that in mind, because um, while even though we're in an El Nino, um, there is that possibility it could be more active than you'd expect because of the warmer than average sea surface temperatures and even if not necessarily a tropical cyclone makes landfall uh, right around the southeast of course with the warmer than average sea surface temperatures there still could be plenty of convection to bring more precipitation um, than average so i want to point this out as well because it could make a big difference in terms of the precipitation anomalies you experience this fall in the southeast and potentially in the north if a tropical cyclone were to move that far north so here is my fall forecast for 2023 so it's very similar to what typically happens during an El Nino I'm putting a lot of emphasis on what um, on the typical pattern for an El Nino with my fall forecast because it the El Nino definitely plays a major role the biggest role in terms of conditions you will experience and so I'm expecting it to be cold and drier than average for much of the northeast because during the fall as we uh, saw during a week to moderate El Nino the temperatures are typically cooler than average and since the polar jet stream during an El Nino is going to be relegated well further northward um, that will prevent a lot of chops from being able to move towards the northeast for um, this fall so I do expect it to be colder and drier than average and there could be that potential of maybe early snowfall at least in the higher elevations of the interior northeast kind of like what we saw throughout the entirety of this past winter except it, it's gonna more likely happen during the fall months um, because I do expect the snow to move a little bit further southward than this past winter because it can't get, um, we can't get any less snow than what we just experienced this winter from many areas of the northeast so, but still there could be that possibility of early snow in the 
um, interior portions of the northeast. I'm expecting more storms than average and colder than average for the southeast thanks to the subtropical jet moving through. That's going to bring more troughs as well as more convection from the warmer than average sea surface temperatures, which will prevent the short wave radiation from the sun from being able to warm up the surface. And again, watch for hurricanes, even though we're in the El Nino year. I'm expecting around an average year when it comes to tropical cyclones cooler than average for much of the southwest and i'm expecting it to be warmer and drier than average for the northern um midwest where the jet stream will be relegated further northward so this is my fall forecast if you want even more in detail forecast just make sure to comment down below and i'll give my best forecast regarding the type of conditions you should expect this fall for much of the United States. So comment down below if you're interested in that and I'll do my best to give um, to give an accurate forecast this for this fall. But um, I thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather-related content.